required farewells and chains. Each action, each act, each thought became a part of a this journey that we choose to experience and live through. Other spirit scenes have been established in the Great Toronto area on the past few years. Northern Spirit is said, uh, nine years ago, the arrest of the victim away, 19 years. And recently, we have in Kitchener a new st a spirit history group uh, called the Paul Guitars. This event, the Drone Spirits Weekend, every edition is also a dream come true. It is the opportunity of sharing the spiritual principles with the multicultural Canadian society. No dia 29 de outubro de 1996, menos de 10 espíritas começaram a reunir-se com frequência com o propósito de estudar e praticar o Espiritismo. Depois de algum tempo, decide-se então iniciar o jornal de anos desse Espírito Espírito. Desde então, apesar de algumas despedidas, de alguns membros e várias mudanças, cada ação, cada fato, cada pensamento começou a ser parte dessa jornada que, nos, que nós escolhemos experienciar e viver. Outros centros espíritas têm se estabelecido na grande área de Toronto nos últimos anos. Rest on the Way, 19 anos, Toronto Espiritist Society, 9 anos, e recentemente o um grupo de estudos espíritas Paulo de Tarso, em Kitchener, que celebra um ano. Esse evento, Toronto Espiritist Weekend, a cada, a cada edição que se realiza, é também um sonho se concretizando. É uma oportunidade de dividir os princípios espíritas com a sociedade multicultural canadense. The Toronto Spirits Weekend is a biannual meeting that has been taking place since 2007, where worldwide speakers come together to facilitate workshops about spirituals. We are dedicated to present the latest research and topics studied by spiritualists, such which include discussions of various concepts and practices of spirituals, as well as addressing the scientific aspects of those studies. Moreover, it is an opportunity for practitioners of spirits to exchange ideas and experiences. Themes discussed on TSWs are relevant to actual problems lived by the community, bringing the spirit in psychology, which is dedicated to dissemination, to disseminate the Christian spirits and promotion of community development and mature activities. That said, it's important to remember that the principles of spirituals codified by Alan Kardec are found in three aspects science, philosophy, and religion. Science. Spirituals is a science which studies nature, origin, and the spirits of destiny, as well as their relationship with the material world. Philosophy. Spirituals is a science of observation, as well as a collection of philosophical teachings. The philosophy, it it comprises all the moral consequences coming from these relationships. And religion, from the religious point of view, spiritualism has the same fundamentals as all other religions God, soul, immortality, punishment, and virtual rewards. Its objective is to prove to those that they deny it or are in doubt that the souls exist and that is, survives the experiences after death. The consequences of the practice of good and evil while incarnated, the objective of all religions. No TSW e a sua história. Toronto Spirits Weekend é um evento que acontece a cada dois anos desde 2007, onde palestrantes de diversas nacionalidades participam de fóruns onde discute-se temas sobre o Espiritismo. Somos dedicados a apresentar as últimas pesquisas e tópicos pelos espíritas, onde estudamos vários conceitos e práticas do espiritismo, assim como a parte científica dos mesmos. Além disso, é uma bela oportunidade para os praticantes do espiritismo para trocar ideias e experiências. Os temas discutidos do TSW são sempre de natureza de problemas atuais na comunidade, como o enfoque dado à luz, 
do da psicologia espírita, a qual é dedicada à disseminação do espiritismo cristão e à promoção do desenvolvimento comunitário e atividades humanitárias. É sempre importante lembrar que os princípios do espiritismo codificado por Allan Kardec são fundamentados em três aspectos: ciência, filosofia e religião. Ciência, espiritismo é ciência qual estuda a natureza, origem e o destino dos espíritos, assim como também com o seu relacionamento com o mundo material. Filosofia, espiritismo é uma ciência de observação que também estuda e pratica filosofia. Aqui há uma observação para compreender todas as consequências morais advindas desse relacionamento entre o mundo espiritual e material. Religião, do ponto de vista religioso, espiritismo tem o mesmo fundamento de outras religiões. Deus, alma, imortalidade, punição e recompensa futura. Seu objetivo é provar aqueles que a negam ou estão em dúvida que a alma existe e que sobrevive e experiencia após a morte as consequências da prática do bem, do mal, enquanto encarnado. Objetivo de todas as religiões. Eu ainda quero recapitular o que foi apresentado no previous Trans Spirits Weekend. Em 2007, no primeiro ano, nós estamos celebrando os 150 anos do Inclusive Book. The Spirits Book will reveal about the teachings that the good spirits left to us through Kardec to guide us to a better life. In 2009, the second one, we talked about the in life goes on. What and how and why about communicating with the spirits. Series of presentations about communication with spirits, how spirits talk to us and influence our lives from something as subtle as inspiration to the hard scientific evidence of electronic communication. In 2011, the third one, we talked about mediumship. We debated of concept and practice, boosting your emotional intelligence for a balanced uh, sexy sense. In 2013, the fourth one, it was about mental health and emotions on the public was the public was educated about the factors that it was triggered obsession as well as its cause mechanisms to deal with guilt in order to reach happiness addressing the main fears which interfere it in its search in 2015 the fifth one integrative care in medical practice a link between science and spirituality we're talking about the world wealth organization father of life protocol Place beyond the biological, psychology, and social, the spiritual domain as new territory for expansion of health and medicine. 2017, the sixth one, uh, life your, live your life to the fullest. Public was educated about the behaviors that it was warning signs of serious depression and despair, which can help to save lives. Just that, uh, um resumo das últimas palestras que foram feitas através do Toronto Espíritos Weekend, em 2007, celebrando 150 anos do Livro dos Espíritos, visão geral sobre os ensinamentos com os nossos Espíritos nos deixar por meio de Allan Kardec, para nos guiar a uma vida melhor. Em 2009, a, o tema foi E a Vida Continua, o que como e por que sobre a comunicação dos espíritos. Uma série de apresentações sobre comunicação com os espíritos, como os espíritos falam conosco e influenciam nossas vidas, de algo tão sutil quanto a inspiração, as difíceis evidências científicas da comunicação eletrônica. Em 2011, foi o nosso terceiro evento, Mediunidade, Debate de Conceitos e Práticas. Aumentando sua inteligência emocional para um sexto sentido equilibrado. Em 2013, o tema foi saúde mental e honestidade emocional, onde fomos educados sobre os fatores que podem desencadear a obsessão e suas causas, mecanismos para lidar com a culpa a fim de alcançar a felicidade, abordando os principais medos que interferem em sua busca. Em 2015, nós tivemos 
o tema cuidados integrativos na prática médica, no elo entre a ciência e a espiritualidade, onde fomos educados sobre o protocolo de qualidade de vida da Organização Mundial da Saúde, é, tem um novo código que se chama CID, ou CID 10, é, o item F44.3, que fala sobre os estados de trânsito e possessão. Código é, onde se coloca, né, que vai além da biologia, psicologia e social, o domínio espiritual como território para a expansão do conceito de saúde e medicina. E o nosso último evento foi em 2016, onde o tema foi Viva Sua Vida ao Máximo, é, onde nós fomos educados sobre os comportamentos e sinais de alerta, de grave depressão e desespero, que podem ajudar a salvar vidas nos casos de suicídio. Once again, welcome to the 7 Toronto Spirits Weekend, which the theme will be Health, the Perfect Harmony of Your Soul. Toronto, Toronto, Joana, Joana Girondo is a spiritual group. And Toronto Spirit Society are hosting a forum to offer all the participants a deeper, a deeper discussion on the importance of moral, emotional, and behavioral education for a physical and spiritual healing. Our thoughts are a life force that generates emotions and feeling, which will make us to react or not. It is extremely important to understand that your conscious or unconscious daily behaviors mental and emotional state will re react in your body with profound metabolic unbalances resulting in several diseases. Actions from this life or past lives are requested to be resolved for the sake of a better health. There are, lot, there are five public lectures scattered, which will follow by a period when questions will be taken from the audience. This year, the Toronto Spirits Weekend brings an innovation. The uh, Toronto Spirits Weekend kids which will have kids from 4 to 13 years old. The main reason why the spirit reincarnates is for re-education. The childhood is the most flexible and flexible phase of the reincarnation. It is when the spirit is more receptive. The gospel for kids class, the spirit understands better the good practice for a lot and, and achieves higher levels of spirituality forever. We hope that at the end of these two days, at the end, at the evening of the participants, we'll have the rare opportunity to get to know each other more intimately. Understand that the modern holistic therapeutic conception, the emotional states of the cellular, cellular fields are not separated by any metabolic disorders, and the malfunctioning of the human body confirmed by recent medical scientific studies and research. It is our pleasure to welcome you all to the seventh round spirits. So, então, o tema desse ano será a saúde é a perfeita harmonia do seu espírito. Toronto, Juno Triology Spiritist Group e Toronto Spirit Society organizam esse fórum para oferecer aos participantes uma discussão mais profunda sobre a importância da educação rural, emocional e comportamental para uma cura física e espiritual. Nossos pensamentos são uma força vital que gera emoções e sentimentos, o que nos fará reagir ou não. É extremamente importante entender que nossos comportamentos diários, conscientes ou inconscientes, estado mental e emocional, reagirão em nosso corpo com profundos desequilíbrios metabólicos, resultando em várias doenças. As ações dessa vida ou vidas passadas devem ser resolvidas em prol de uma saúde em equilíbrio. Este ano, o TSW traz uma inovação, que é o TSW Kids. E a razão principal pela qual o espírito reencarna é a reeducação. A infância é a fase mais flexível e plástica da reencarnação. É quando o espírito é mais receptivo. Por meio do evangelho, as crianças... Para as crianças, o espírito entende melhor as boas práticas, leis morais e alcança níveis mais altos de espiritualidade para sempre. Há cinco palestras públicas, entre hoje e amanhã, é, onde serão seguidas por períodos em que perguntas do público serão respondidas. Desejamos que ao final desses dois dias de evento, cada participante 
ter a oportunidade de conhecer-se mais intimamente. Compreenda que na moderna concepção da terapia holística, já não se separa os estados emocionais dos campos celulares ao identificar-se distúrbios metabólicos e o mau funcionamento do corpo humano. Dados esses confirmados por recentes estudos e pesquisas médicos científicas. Nós desejamos a todos um bom evento e sejam super bem-vindos. Nós vamos fazer a nossa oração inicial para que possamos já começar de novo. O primeiro palestrante para os início das palestras. We're going to start with a, a reading from the book The Psychology of Gratitude by the Spiritual and Angelis and the Medium Developer. The blessing of gratitude. Gratitude stands out as one of the most relevant among the novel sentiment that characterizes a psychological, a psychological mature individual. Life is in the of praise and of itself, and therefore under, under restrained gratitude. It is a vision of harmony, expand, extend throughout the entire universe. Since life is limited by certain expressions through which it manifests itself, it is a challenge that is continually, continuously unfolding in the pursuit of mindfulness. Meaning, when the process of emotional growth frees the spirit from the shadows that had confounded it, Until then, it brings forth the light through it, which is understanding of the significant values that integrate the individual to the harmonious concern of the cosmos. It's thus, gratitude is the force that aims at unraveling the labyrinths of degradation of the essential need. The art of maturity achieved by reason, gratitude. Supersedes instinct, instinct. It is in acquisition of great magnitude because it provides balance to all who know to offer. Gratitude is much deeper and more significant sentiment that for it, it is not limited to the casual reward mechanism. On the contrary, it is greater than for the satisfaction it brings and for its psychotherapeutic character. All who are grateful, who truly understand the significance of real gratitude, enjoy the physical, emotional, and psychological health because they are content in living and sharing all things. They are active participants in social organization, creative, and joyous. So let us be grateful for this time. A bênção da gratidão. Entre os sentimentos nobres que caracterizam o ser psicológico maduro, a gratidão destaca-se como um dos mais relevantes. A vida em si mesma é um hino de louvor à vida, portanto, de gratidão incontível. Vida, porém, é vibração de harmonia presente em todo o universo. Limitada nas diversas expressões pelas quais se manifesta, é um desafio em constante desdobramento na busca de significado. Quando o processo de crescimento emocional liberta o espírito da sombra em que se atende, nele se apresenta a luz da verdade, que é o discernimento em torno dos valores significativos que integram no conceito harmônico do cosmos. A gratidão, dessa maneira, é a força que logra desintegrar os arranjéis de degradação do sentido existencial. Filha da maturidade alcançada mediante a razão, sobrepõe-se ao instinto, é a conquista de elevada magnitude pelo propiciar de equilíbrio que faculta aquele que a sabe ofertar. Comumente, na imaturidade emocional, acredita-se que a gratidão é uma retribuição pelo bem ou pelos favores que se recebem considerando em uma forma de devolução, pelo menos em parte. A gratidão é um sentimento muito mais profundo e significativo, portanto, porque não se limita apenas ao ato da recompensa habitual. 
é mais grandioso porque traz satisfação e tem caráter psicoterapêutico. Todo aquele que é grato, que compreende o significado da gratidão, real, goza de saúde física, emocional e psíquica, porque sente a alegria de viver, compartilha de todas as coisas, é membro atuante da organização social, é criativo e jubiloso. O Dr. Cícero Silva, a Come with a pray to start our event. From that part on, the entire lecture will be in English, translated into Portuguese. If someone needs the equipment, the equipment is at the reception. Thank you. So let's pray. Dear Lord, Master Jesus, mentors of the Spirit Center of Toronto, our own mentors, we're very thankful, we're very grateful to be here today. And we ask that we can have our minds and our hearts open so that what is spoken here may resonate with us. May we bring with us what we learn here. May we share the knowledge that we acquire here. The joy. And the gratitude. with us, sir, and so be it. So let's get started with the lectures. Uh, it's a great pleasure to have pleasure to have here Dr. Cicero Torres Silva. He's a Brazilian uh, living in the US right now. He also lives here in Toronto. He was part of our community um, for two years. And he is Associate Professor of Hydrology and Biomedical Imaging, uh, Chief of Pediatric Imaging. He is current Vice President of the US Spiritualist uh, Medical Association. We also have for this first lecture, um, Dr. Sonia Doi, uh, who's also Brazilian lived in the US for more than 30 years. She is a physician, scientist, MD, PhD, endocrinologist, current president of the following organization, Alan Kardec Spirit Society of Maryland, the United States Spiritist Medical Association, and International Spirit, International Spiritist Medical Association. She resides in the United States of America. Okay, so join me to welcome to Sonia Cicero. My mistake. <laughs> We're gonna have a uh, before we they, they start the lecture, we are gonna do a quick video that talks uh, is an introduction to to the topics that we're gonna be seeing today. So how it works, I don't know. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
condition of life. And for that, we need to develop a proactive attitude towards life, seeking to understand our spiritual nature. But who are we? Where do we come from? And what will be our destination? These are all millennial questions which have plagued mankind throughout the ages, beckoning for answers. When we look at life, we often see it as a series of events, and we often say we are born, we grow, a series of things happen, and then inevitably we die, so death is a part of existence. But the question is, why is the process of death such a source of suffering for some and not for others? According to the World Health Organization, some of the main causes of death are cardiovascular disease, stroke, COPD, diabetes, and depression. And medicine has been rapidly advancing in knowledge and technology to help minimize the causes of these illnesses. And yet, all the advances in technology appear insufficient to control diseases and establish well-being. Why are we still suffering? Have we looked deep into the cause of physical and mental disorders of humanity? Scientific evidence has shown that physical and emotional stress are in the root of many illnesses and that various spiritual approaches are beneficial in restoring health potentiating conventional treatment or even preventing disease. But why don't we use these approaches more often? Why are some people so skeptical? What is, after all, the role of the soul or spirit or consciousness or mind? No matter what you call it, this is the essence of who we are, the human being, and that interacts and survives the physical body. Science and medicine are now able to prolong life by managing and treating illness like never before, but still has yet to cure many diseases and still fails to promote the integral being encompassing mind, body, and spirit. But why? What or where? Is the missing link? And if there is a missing link, where can one find it and unveil it and show the true root of our physical, emotional pain? The spirit, Dr. Andrea Lee, explains in the book Missionaries of the Light that we, a spirit, before incarnating, imprint our spiritual vibration on the genes that will form the new physical body thus creating a new physiological organism. The World Health Organization has defined health as a state of complete physical, mental, and social well-being. In the medical spiritist paradigm, the human being is a three-dimensional structure composed of the physical body, the subtle body, or paraspirit, and soul, or spirit. The main target, however, is the healing of the soul or spirit. 
It is therefore up to the moral spirit to construct and maintain their own health. Spiritism extends this view and teaches that health is a state of complete biopsychosocial spiritual being because it takes into account these biological, psychological, social, and spiritual factors that influence the human being in its passage through early existence. The new era in medicine shall incorporate a spirit-mind-body approach in order to promote the integral health in its truest meaning. It will understand that we are more than a congregation of atoms. We are a spirit experiencing a temporary existence in matter, and spiritism offers the key to the relationship between body and soul, proving that one is constantly acting upon the other. This idea opens up a new field in science by demonstrating the possible true cause of certain diseases, thus making diagnosing and curing easier. In the new era in medicine, health practitioners shall address and be attentive to all aspects of their patients physical, emotional, and spiritual well-being. Compassionate care can be an important tool of one's integral healing and practice. In the new era of medicine, health practitioners shall view the patient as a transcendental and moral being where the illness of today could be a result of a cause within the current or past life. The new era in medicine will not only treat the patient's physical body, but will integrate a multi-level approach to restore total health. The health practitioner will not only fix or help with the cure of the body, but also will be a servant of humanity, promoting true healing. As Dr. Rachel Naomi Levin once said, healthy Fixing and serving represent three different ways of seeing life. When you help, you see life as weak. When you fix, you see life as broken. But when you serve, you see life as whole. Fixing and helping may be the work of the ego, and service the work of the soul. Let's embrace and usher in the new era. All right, so now, yes, welcome to Cicero and Sonia. Hello, good afternoon. Uh, I'm very happy to be here and I want to express my gratitude to all the organizers of this meeting, everybody who has worked so hard and still working very hard to have this uh, uh, beautiful event here. So I'm honored to be invited. And um, after this uh, movie, you know, we, 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 have, we don't even need to say much because it's all there. But uh, I wanted to start by talking a little bit about the Spiritist Medical Associations, the structure, the role, and Cicero is going to be, uh, we're going to be working together in bringing this information. And at the end, uh, there are only a few slides, at the end, we're going to open and talk a little bit more about this new era of medicine and I, I hope that this is going to be more like a conversation, uh, interactive uh, discussion so that we can talk more than just 
we telling you uh, our ideas. Yeah, we have, I think, something like one hour, and we have very few slides, so really much of it we hope to be an interaction. Uh, the slides will be just a few minutes, and hopefully we'll have uh, question and answers and interact a lot with you. So, um, first I want to bring you a little bit about the, the, the history of what we call the Spiritist Medical Associations. The first organization was founded in the city of Sao Paulo, Brazil, in 1968. And this was uh, uh, called um, uh, the, the Associação Médico Espírita, which the acronym is AME, and in Portuguese, this means love, to love. So it, it came, the acronym was very meaningful in the sense that we were to integrate the patient uh, with the healthcare pr practitioners in uh, love, in the practice of love, not just technique, not just technology. So that's how the, the acronym came. Dr. Marlene Nobre was one of was together with the founders of the organization in Sao Paulo. In 1995, she was inspired to and guided by Dr. Bezerra de Menezes to found a organization at the national level. So she then founded the Brazilian Spiritist Medical Association because at that time, from 68 to 95, there were many organizations populating the country in different states, different cities. So there were many organizations. So they decided to have a national organization to work together so that everybody could kind of work together. So this is Dr. Marlene Nobre. She passed away um, in 2000. In 16, and unfortunately, so uh, we, but she was a, a incredible worker, inspiring, bringing the knowledge to people, working together uh, to disseminate this idea. The success of the, the Brazilian uh, Spiritist Association activities motivated the foundation of an international medical association because at that time Dr. Mulaney was also inspired to start meetings and organizations in Europe. So she went to Europe, started uh, with few groups to organize meetings in medicine and spirituality and then came the idea again inspired by Dr. Becerra Menezes in 1999 to found an international organization, which now has affiliates in different countries. And at that time, in June of 1999, there were five uh, uh, countries that were represented when, uh, uh, for this foundation. Argentina, Colombia, Guatemala, Panama, in Portugal. So they started with five organizations, five representatives. And again, under the guidance of uh, the International Spiritist Medical Association, with the support of Dr. Malini Nobre, we founded the US uh, organization in uh, October 22nd, 2006. And it's a uh, uh, Incorporated as a non profit organization, educational organization. So, here is just like a, uh, a more um, figurative yeah, chronology yeah. infographic, right? <laughs> uh, of all these um, events together. So, currently, the international organization has several countries that have uh, been affiliated. In South America, we have Brazil, Argentina, and Colombia. Uruguay is preparing 
to incorporate as a, as a non-profit. In Central America, we have Panama. Guatemala and Cuba are still organizing the paperwork, so they have not, they are like groups affiliated, but they have not actually founded a, a, a incorporation or an organization. North America, we only have the US, but we are stimulating Canadians. If you want to see in Canada here next time. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's been our dream to have Canada incorporated into our, under our affiliates. And we're going to talk a little bit more about it. In Europe, we already have Portugal. We have several in Portugal, Switzerland, and France. And we have the UK uh, organization already almost completed. And um, they, they have all the paperwork already aligned. It's probably going to be uh, official, if not until the end of this year, right by the beginning of next year. And one of the doctors that is in working for, for the organization of this new um, SMA in UK is a doctor who has been invited to give talks in our um, meetings for more than 10 years. And he was not an scientist, but now he finally decided to work together and come as one of the leaders of this new organization, Dr. Peter Fenwick. Um, anything? So what is the mission of the Spiritist Medical Associations? And here's this, what very, in a, in a very short way. Our mission is to build a body of knowledge based on Spiritist concepts, survival wisdom, three main concepts, survival of the soul, communicability of spirits, and reincarnation, together with scientific research to support the spiritist medical paradigm. What is that? Is the paradigm that embodies the concept that the human being is constituted by body and spirit and spirit, that we are spiritual beings. That's the main idea. Now, um, how we're going to talk a little more about this, but and it will be something like bridging medicine and spirituality. Exactly, right? exactly. So, if we, especially in countries out of Brazil or South America, South America, I was, uh, you know, uh, there are a lot of countries that already know spiritism, mm -hmm. the main country that knows spiritism in Brazil, of course, but. Other countries in South America, spiritism is kind of known. Out of there, spiritism, especially in the United States, it's not known. Uh, we Brazilians have been kind of populating the idea in other countries. Wherever we go, we have been the seeds of these spiritist ideas. Um, and, and, and so when we present Congresses, conferences, we usually call it medicine and spirituality, so that embraces spiritism and embraces other ideas that are similar to what we're talking about, that are working in the aligned with the spiritist concepts. So, yeah. So the spiritist medical congresses. You know, it's funny because when you guys were presenting about the TSW and we're saying that it started in 2007 and it's biannual, but hmm, we are also biannual. And we started one year earlier. So actually it seems that we intercalate with you guys. So we started the Spiritist Medical Congress in 2006 and we've been running it uh, every two years. And uh, as you can see there, most of them were in Washington, but we also have, uh, we have had uh, help from our friends in Florida. For example, we've had the last one in, uh, in Miami, which was very, very nice. The next one will be next year. So you guys can think of, you know, one year you go to the Spiritist Medical Congress, the next year 
<coughs> yes, the next year we come to the uh, Toronto Spirit this weekend. Uh, and the, the idea of those congresses, like Sonia was saying, is really to try to bridge what we as physicians of occidental medicine, the way we practice, trying to bridge that with the notion of spirituality. So what we have had is, if you look at these people, these were all uh, some, some of the, actually we were putting together this slide yesterday, and it was hard because there were so many more people that we wanted to put here, but there was just no space. So these are some of the people who have uh, lectured to us. And if you see those names, those are really renowned uh, researchers, uh, most of them doctors of, let's say, occident, occident, occidental medicine, put it this way, but not necessarily. We have uh, naturopathic doctors who have lectured at our event. We have had psychologists. And the, if you look at all of them, what they might have in common is, again, these are really renowned people who do, most of them do research on spirituality. And what we do is, let's say, they will give a lecture, and then we will try to uh, join that with the spiritist knowledge. So they, through research, they help us by showing what we know from our books. And uh, so, for example, they will be talking about uh, healing and, and, you know, the energy. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, there's, there's spirits, you know. So we complement we complement with the spiritist uh, view. So it, it's it's really a good match, and they are not biased by being spiritist. Although uh, is Dr. Fenwick there? Yes, Dr. Fenwick is right here. So this is one who's again very well known. If you go and look him up, a lot of publication. And uh, after coming to to our event, he you know yeah this makes sense. Uh, because it does, right? So they have the research and we show that, yes, this is the logic behind all of that. So it, it's been really successful. Yeah. Okay, so I, I want to just to compliment a little bit more here. Um, you see here, uh, we put two pictures of doctors who are spiritists. One is Dr. Anceloni, who is here. Dr. Alexander Moreira Meda, uh, who is uh, Dr. Alexander, is a leader in spirituality in Brazil. He is in uh, City Minas Gerais, Rio de Fora, but he is also a leader in the World Psychiatry Association. So through him, uh, two years ago or a year ago, he the World uh, Psychiatry Association incorporated spirituality in their meetings. So the annual meetings never had talks in spirituality, now they do. And he does a lot of research which are published in uh, international journals. So you see many of our research, if uh, they are published locally in their countries. They do not make much of, uh, uh, they don't come across to other people, to other researchers. But if they are published in an international journal, being European, being uh, American journals, then they have a, a, a much broader uh, uh, interaction. So, he has been an incredible researcher to bring out the spiritist or the spirituality idea into science and medicine. Um, I also want to talk about Dr. Harold Koenig here. Dr. Koenig is um, from Duke University, North Carolina. He is uh, a leader in publications in spirituality in the U.S. Has more than 100 papers published. Um, he has several books published. He was a speaker last year again. He was in our first Congress and he was uh, back last year with us. And the interesting thing when these 
scientists, these researchers who are not spiritists come to our meeting to give their message, to bring, to share their knowledge. They bring, as Cicero pointed out, knowledge that is free of biases. They are not uh, um, uh, in, uh, uh, together, they, they are not uh, influenced by faith. So it's basically... They don't have an agenda. So they don't have an agenda, right. So it's basically their research, their study, their idea from the scientific. But it's the ones that we invite, they have ideas, they are aligned with what we learn in spiritism. Mm -hmm. And when they come, they give their lecture, they stay there, and we always have lectures of spiritism. So they bring something, they take something back. And that's the important part because we are also kind of exchanging knowledge with them. They go back thinking, ah, what, I, what they're saying makes sense with what I'm studying or what I'm saying. So they go learning what the spiritism is, what are the basis of spiritism. And interestingly, sometimes, for example, like Dr. Jim Tucker here, I think many of you may know Dr. Jim Tucker. He is the, the scientist who has continued the research of Dr. I. Stevenson. Dr. I. Stevenson was uh, the pioneer in reincarnation. And once he passed, Jim Tucker took his place and continues doing research. Now, Dr. Jim Tucker has a lot of research in reincarnation. You know, he has kids who remember past lives. He travels back to really certify, collect evidence of that past life to see if matches. So he has publications on that beautifully documented. One day I asked him, Dr. Tucker, you have so much evidence. Do you have an explanation how this, he, he does um, research on birth marks, especially. And I say, do you have any idea how the birth marks from a past incarnation comes back in another body? Something physical, right? And he looks at me like he has never had this question. He looks at me and says, No, I don't have an explanation. And I said, Well, in spiritism, we do have an explanation. What about you give a lecture on your evidence and we give a lecture on how spiritism explains this? And he says, Ah, good idea. So we're still going to do that. I'll let you know when we do it. The other interesting person is Dr. Kim Von Lomo. I don't know if you have uh, heard of him. In 2008, I think, I don't remember quite well. He, he's a cardiologist, he's now retired, but he's a cardiologist. And he was working and seeing some cases of near death experience. I heard about it. And he says, ah, I'm going to, I have a great idea. I'm going to do a study, a prospective study for eight years. I'm going to look at everyone who comes to the nerve to the ICU and do a electrocardiogram and electroencephalogram if they have a cardiac arrest. And I want to know whether you know anybody has this near death experience. He was like very skeptical about it. So he does that. This is in the Netherlands. And in his ICU and some other ICUs in the Netherlands, he collected several cases of people who had a cardiac arrest with a near death experience. And he makes, you know, all this study in a very scientific method. He collected the cases, he collected all the um, questionnaire, which was the same questionnaire to everybody. And at the end, 
he analyzes this and he sees that patients who had the cardiac arrest in different times, different ways, had very similar experiences. He goes, it, they, they, they were not talking to one another, so how come they have very similar experiences? How are the experiences that we... And the, the electroencephalogram was flat, right? So right. So if you just think of a materialistic way of how thought is made, how could they be having all these mental constructs if their brain was just not firing anything? Exactly. They were scientifically, through all the proofs, they were dead during a few minutes. Now, after this, the ones that survived, and not all of them had this uh, remembrances, the ones who had and fill out the questionnaire, it was very similar. So he published a paper in a very uh, high-level journal um, from England called The Lancet. It's very, 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 very hard to have a paper, scientific, a scientific paper published in this world. And he had this paper published. Now, the interesting thing is, at the end of the paper, he writes, I am certain that these experiences were real, and I'm certain that these were experiences of some conscious, consciousness that was out of the physical body, because I'm certain that the physical body, at that moment, the brain was absolutely flat, flat line because he had a proof, right? So he says, I know the consciousness, consciousness was out of the body. How this happened, I don't know. So he was humble enough to say, I don't know how to say, I, I don't know how to explain. So when we, and then he, he, he puts in the paper, it would be interesting if you read the paper, but he, he uh, tells about a, one of the patients, and he tells in his lecture too, one of the patients that um, after the experience, I'm going to shorten it, but the patient says to the nurse, uh, he was going to be discharged, and he tells the nurse, can you give my denture, please? And she goes, your denture, I don't know, it must have lost during your cardiac arrest. He says, no, the nurse put in the cart. It's there in the cart, in the little drawer in the cart. And she says, ah. Oh. So she goes there, puts the drawer, and then away the danger. So she says, how do you know? He says, I saw it. I was up there, and I saw it. <laughs> <laughs> so that was incredible. He tells this in the paper, scientific paper. He tells this in the lecture. And the other interesting thing is that one of the patients was blind from birth. And the patient who was born blind remembers seeing the, the surgery room or, or the ICU and the doctors were doing the cardiac or working. So I asked him, how do you feel after your research, and he says, he said, that completely changed my life, the way I see life. So that's just, you know, a few of these people are amazing when you talk uh, to them. One of them is Canadian, Dr. Drysdale, and she's from Vancouver, she's a teacher, UBC. professor, UBC, yeah. And, um, she talks, she said, I have heard about so many accounts of near-death experience. And it's time that psychiatrists start to think that these accounts are not real, that these are delirians. These are not delirians. These are real accounts. And as a psychiatrist, she has all the methodology to recognize what is 
a you know delirium a mental disorder from what the patient is talking about so it's beautiful also because she makes a distinction between that and the, the remembrances from a near-death experiences so she's now talking in, in all her talks about using the near-death experience remembrances memories to tell her patients who come for example afraid of death i'm not afraid of dying and she says well some people who almost died came back to tell us that the experience is not that bad the experience was good they saw light you know most i think 90 percent of the memories are pleasant memories so she uses that and that, that's really beautiful and i could talk about no, I think that's it. The, 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 the message is, uh, see, these are people who, again, they are very well respected. And the good is when they come to our meetings, we get to plug in uh, our end and they take that of them. So we, we feel that that may make a difference uh, in the future. Dr. Sergio Lopez is another Brazilian spiritist, physician. And he, uh, together with other two colleagues, they published a beautiful book, which is kind of hard to read because there's a lot of science behind it, all the brain anatomy and physiology, and it's called the Triunal Brain. It's still in Portuguese, but we are translating, our association is translating it into English. And it's a beautiful book that talks about how all the brains compartmentalized, but it has this interaction that favors interaction with the spirit realm. In Portuguese, it is Cerebro Triuno. Cerebro Triuno. That's it. So, um, so the, the International Spirit Association now is uh, working to inspire other countries to work together bringing conferences on spirituality and science spirituality and medicine so that we can convey the message and you want to ask why you want to have a spiritist medical association to do that many people ask but I tell you one thing, being a physician myself, doctors of medicine are very, very resistant to anything that has to do with religion. Why? Because they are educated, we are educated, usually in our you know, main course, uh, physiology, anatomy, blah, 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 all about the physical body. That's what we learned in so many years of medicine, we learn about the physical body, how to fix things in the physical body, and we think that this is all. That's medicine for us. We don't learn about anything that's out of the body. We don't know how to handle these things. Right? So when it comes to for a little bit of physicians, now I have nothing to do with this. Plus, many of them say religion there and I'm here. You can do whatever you want, that's your faith. My work is to give you medicine, to do surgery, to do this, to do that, that's all. So it's very hard to get a physician to come to the spiritist center to hear about things that are, you know, say, for example, yesterday we were talking a little bit about this, but say the the, the book um, Evolution into the World, Chick Xavier. If you don't have the, some basis in biology, in medicine, it's very, very hard to read that book. Very hard. That book has been translated to English and was uh, released last year. But it's very 
<coughs> now, you give this to a doctor and he says, Spirit is in, no, I don't want to know about it. Bring to Spirit Center now. And this is for I have nothing to do with that. So it's very hard. When we try to convey the message, that will be very important in their practice. They're not very open to that. Some uh, exceptions exist, of course, but majority are very resistant. But when we talk about spirituality, uh, it's a little broader. Uh, we don't have a specific label. They come. And now they present the version and when present them with the greatest version. Not version, but complement. And I say, ah, it makes sense. So it's a way of speaking the same language. If we talk to them in the language, in the scientific language, if we translate the concept of spiritism in a way that they can understand within their language, the language that they use routinely, they will listen. If we try to talk in a different language, they kind of uh, they find sometimes that they are above that line, unfortunately. So the, the congresses that we, uh, we try to bring to them is um, allow them to say, okay, this sounds like professional. So yeah, let me go and see what this is about. So it's a way of trying to make them part of it, expose the ideas so that they might stay with us or not, but at least they are exposed to that. So the International Association has given support to several groups in Europe, group, spiritist groups, Majority of them are, were seated for the Brazilians, and now they have been put to go already. And we give them support, and they promote meetings on medicine and spirituality, on health and, and spirituality. So these meetings um, attract people, professionals, and they try to always do this associated with the uh, hospital, university, if possible. So this attracts a little bit more professionals. And here you see between the months of October and November, a little bit more than 30 days, we have meetings in all these cities. It is incredible. But these are spiritist groups. We give them support and we have meetings in one month and we had several of our speakers going from one place to another during the week. So it's um, something that we are offering to other countries, and I'm now very pleased to offer to Canada too, that the spirit is here, even if you don't want to, you don't feel like you're ready to form a spirit medical association yet, you can start by organizing a meeting on spirituality and medicine. And how we do this, how we do this interaction, you are now doing one on your own. But um, what the way we work together is by offering speakers that sometimes come from Brazil, sometimes we have uh, speakers from the US, um, so we work together in the program. Usually, the associated groups that are uh, offering the congress are the groups that are going to work with the logistics. So you go to work with where it's going to be, all the logistics, uh, offer accommodation for the speakers. The Brazilian speakers, because they are spiritists, and they. They are really working from their 
hard to do this work, they pay their own tickets. So all these people who are going to Europe, they are paying for their own contracts. So they they do that with these the speakers who were not spiritists, for example, from the US, from Canada, who are not spiritists, but are aligned with our ideas, our association pays for their ticket to go to a specific meeting if we do this like you know, uh, uh, in a collaborative way. So, uh, yeah, no, I think that's it. I was actually looking at the, the clock and uh, we said it was just a few slides. <laughs> what if we uh, do we... Let me see if I have one more. I don't think, no. Ah, yes, of course I have. This is, this is what moves us. And this is in the gospel according to spirit. You know, so in the introduction, many people don't know in the introduction, Introduction is rich and it brings a summary of the um, Socrates and Plato theories. And it says if physicians fail in treating most ailments, it is because they treat the body without treating the soul. And since the whole is not in a good state, it is impossible for any of one part of the body to be well. So we have to treat the whole meaning. I cannot just fix the body. And there's another continuation of this. I forgot it says saying, once science begins taking into account the spiritual element in the body's economy, it will fail less frequently. So that's what, what is promoting our work, is to make medicine more efficient, to make, we are, we are the ones who, even the ones who are doctors, get sick from one time or another, and we need to be treated. So it is important. We want to be treated in, as a whole. We don't want to just be it is, it's interesting how our message, this message resonates a lot with the naturopathic doctors in the US, right? Uh, even more so than the MDs, right? Absolutely. And that, I, I think here in Canada you have a, a lot of naturopathic medicine too, don't you? Yeah. yeah. In the uh, US we have, I'm now part of a, a school of naturopathic medicine in the, in the city of Portland, Oregon. And um, they, they work in a different schedule than the traditional medicine doctors. They see, and many of you already have this experience, they see a patient, they actually give time to listen to the patients, to know is something, what is the whole setting here? You come with a stomachache, but what's your life? How is the work? How is everything about the intelligence? So, so right, this is this is a big difference. Now in the US, and I think Brazil it is following the same model, because of the structure of the healthcare, uh, doctors may only give you five, ten minutes, right? You come in, or they come in, you are already sitting there waiting, and they come in and say, what's wrong with you? Um, what brings you here today? And you start saying, yeah. and if you say more than two three words, they are not listening anymore. Yeah. And, and then they want to give you a prescription, and they don't want to know if you are depressed, if you are having an anxiety, if none of this matters, oh, you have a depression, go to the psychiatrist here. Okay. So, so that's what we want to change. We want to have the doctors a little more aware of, yeah, you have a stomachache, but the cause is not there 
is not just doing um, an endoscopy or giving you the medication. What is triggering this stomach ache may be something else. So let's think about it. Or, and now, most of the medical schools, I think, if this is a regular program, is saying um, the curriculum has incorporated spirituality assessment. So there's light at the end of the tunnel. Yes. But the problem that I see with this is you teach them, you teach the students how to assess spirituality. So they have their questionnaire and they ask the patient, they are, you know, it's there, they have to do it. Um, do you have a faith, a religion? Uh, do you have a supporting group? And they check boxes. And it's there. So what if the patient doesn't? What if the patient has, but the patient didn't link the disease or the discomfort with anything spiritual? So they don't make the link. They don't make the connection for the patient, right? So that's that's their first work. Um, nowadays, we see this, like you said, uh, a light at the end of the tunnel. Uh, a few weeks ago in Brazil, the Heart Brazilian Heart Association declared is now in their statute that all the cardiologists have to do an assessment and talk about spirituality with their patients. Because they found so many papers on research saying that, yes, much of, go of things that happens, you know, like cause a cardiac uh, disease is emotional. They also learned or have seen research showing that um, practices on spirituality, different types of practices, are helpful and can help the patient to heal. And healing and curing are two different things. There's a book, a uh, textbook, on uh, integrative medicine. Okay, that's finish. <laughs> Sorry, I thought I didn't have much to say. <laughs> okay, I'm just going to say this. There's a book on a, a textbook on integrative medicine. So it's a book that you know doctors will read. They don't pay much attention to this, but there's a paragraph there that says cure and healing are two different things. You can cure a disease like blood pressure, high blood pressure, with in medication. But if you don't heal the patient, if you don't see where the cause is, if you don't work with that, a disease may come back or may even be worse than the one that was before. You know, I didn't have a cure. So healing is going deep inside. The person may still have the disease. So for example, a person who has terminal cancer might still have terminal cancer, you didn't cure the patient, but the patient now is in a state of harmony, serenity, resigned, your peace. This is healing. Right? So that's what we work with. Took too much time. <laughs> so, how how are we? Do we do the Q and A during the break? Do we do it now? Well, now we can do uh, Q and A now. So I have a microphone. Whoever had a question, just raise your hand. One at a time, please. <laughs> Good afternoon. Thank you for inviting me. Um, my first question is: in the world where there's so many information, either it be online or 
books, articles, I often find myself, how do I verify the validity and how do I know that it is uh, peer-reviewed information regarding spirituality and health? When it comes to health articles, uh, I am a, a nutritionist by trade, uh, I know that it's been peer-reviewed. When it comes to spirituality, how do I verify it? Because it's really information. Great question. We consider only peer-reviewed articles when it is published PubMed, for example. If you go to PubMed and type there spirituality, you're going to find all the articles that have been peer-reviewed. Right? All the same. Absolutely the same. Same standards. Uh, same standards. There's, uh, it's kind of like a parallel, not exactly spiritism, but there is a, a conference in integrative medicine that runs uh, every year. And uh, when they when they're taking abstracts, uh, I'm I'm one of the reviewers for them. So we judge just like we would judge uh, any abstract in, in any other uh, conference. We look at their sample. We look at the method. Uh, does it make sense? Are the conclusions based on the on the findings? Whatever they're saying in discussion, is it what they saw in results? Uh, so same standards. But I guess uh, if you're specifically thinking. Okay, what about this article here? I guess for the Yeah, there's a uh, few journals, you know, the regular scientific journals, like the Lancet. It's very, very hard to publish a book on spirituality. So only Dr. Pimalomo, because it was so high uh, level. Uh, but other, there is a journal called um, Journal of for Religion and Health. And it's, uh, I think it's a uh, English journal, if I'm not mistaken. And that publishes basically articles in spirituality, religion, and health. And mm -hmm. one other thing is that it may be hard to measure. Uh, you, you won't be able to measure everything that you want in relation to, to healing. There is a very good lecture by Shoyo Podobon in one of the spiritist uh, uh, and the U.S. greatest conferences. I think it's online. If you just go to Julio Padovan, and uh, do, do you recall the title? It was something about cure and uh, and uh, in spirituality. Do, do you recall Vanessa? I'm sorry. It's uh, but but the point was he, he gives a whole lecture on how it's difficult to to use uh, scientific method, and we try, but how it's difficult. In spirituality, because it's hard to measure uh, what we want to measure, which is healing. Although some some uh, papers that were published, for example, in the Journal of Religion and Health, uh, they had specific markers. For example, they want to know what is the effect of the passes or some other uh, meditation practice, and they measure cortisol, they measure heart rate, they have specific measurements uh, as an endpoint to be more like scientific. Uh, otherwise, it, it's really hard. But all everything that's being published, especially that journals that you're looking from that, are peer reviewed. Uh, so question first. I'm glad that you guys mentioned about uh, cats and uh, how the the food therapy that the street center is offering. My question is about the documentation of the street center. So how this is relevant for the work that you guys do in order to come to a doctor and just say, here it is, we have XYZ person that came to a street center uh, had a spiritual treatment, and this was what they were feeling, and this is the result of how they feel today. It's like how the spiritual, the spiritual center can have that documentation, how that information would help to, uh, let's say, assist on that uh, project. This has to be done in a very scientific methodology. Dr. Giancarlo Bucchetti, uh, again a Brazilian doctor, 
has published a paper on specifically on that methodology of research because this is basically research, right? So you need to use research methodology very uh, rigid, I would say, not to create biases. And that's the only way you can present it as an evidence because otherwise, you know, science will not accept. So we have uh, ourselves, uh, and I'm sure you know, in the great centers here, you have these uh, cases where sometimes a person says, "Well, you know, I came, I did this task, and I was here, I did this, I did all of this, and then I'm feeling much better, or I got much better than my doctor said expected." But now, how do you do it? So we really need, if we want to do anything like this, we need to follow a methodology like Dr. Pinto So you have to go from here now, every patient, every person that comes looking for treatment, I'm gonna do this, 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 this. So you need to have somebody who will work with you in the methodology and create a file. So after that, you can, for, for example, uh, present to a journal and it will be peer reviewed. Once it's published, it's a lot, it, it means, this has done good scientific methodology spread. So you mean uh, it needs to be something uh, prospective as opposed to she from now onwards in her spirit center, she creates a repository and then 10 years later we go there and oh, let's look at their data. Uh, that's harder. Yeah, it, it is harder, yeah. Well, because, you know, in science many times we do retrospective, right, uh, research. So we look at the past documentation. But for spirit centers, because we don't have real measurable data, it, it's harder because you depend on somebody who said this, somebody who said that in a different way. So it's very difficult. It, it is necessary. It's certainly being biased that you're going to ask, are you feeling better? Yes, I yeah. am. Uh, if they're not there, don't even show up. So it's, it's tricky, I guess. So we have to create some methodology to, to do that. In a prospective way, which I think it's Does that very exist? Does that exist? exist. There, are, there is a spirit center, there are spirit centers in Brazil who have done that. Uh, there is a work that was done in Connecticut by your friend. Remember, she did a work in Connecticut, and she was Silvana. She it was part of her um, school. So, Work part of her, yeah, part of her, her yeah, conclusion. conclusion. She had to do something about it, she decided to do with for spirit center. So she wrote a protocol, she followed that protocol, looking at patients who came with some kind of uh, um, you know, problem, and she followed that. And after a certain time, she kind of measured that. It's you know. There are biases, yes, but they, she kind of followed her methodology. Uh, that was not published yet, but it was very well received when she presented this to the board, and, and she did this as a conclusion of her examination at the school in the It was very well received. Other questions? Um, I apologize for my ignorance. But what exactly is natural transit medicine and what is its relation? What is the relation with spirituality? Do we have anyone in the audience who's a naturopath who could explain? Okay. So the naturopathic medicine started years and years ago, actually. It was, uh, it came to the US. I'm sorry if I say US, US, oh, yeah. as Yankees, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so that's where we live. Yeah, it is not so far from here, so we feel like we are um, south of the border. Yeah. Uh, but, anyways, it is because my experience is from the US, that's why I refer to that. But it was brought by German um, doctors who. His, his uh, idea was that nature heals nature. And this actually is a concept 
from um, um, I no, um, our uh, 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 it was his um, concept. You major use major. So they use resources from nature. Like homeopathy, for example. Homeopathy, herbal medicine, uh, massage therapy, acupuncture, uh, lots of uh, nutrition, and a lot of things from nature to heal. And they had this concept that what they are healing is not just the physical body, but they are healing the, in, in their concept the energy of the person. They are aligning the energy of the person, right? So that's how they see it. And um, so that relates them to spirituality very much. And uh, in this school in Portland, we are now in the process of um, uh, organizing an institute for spirituality and health. Many schools already have one, but um, sometimes they, they are very narrow, narrow-minded. But the naturopathic doctors are a lot more aligned with our ideas that we are not just a physical body. And to tell the truth, when we look at acupuncture, right, it seems like it's just printing on a physical body, but we we are actually activating parts of our very spirit with, with those. And that's how we kind of translate that into our mind. Just uh, being a little bit of devil's advocate or, or a note of caution. If we think, okay, this is uh, occidental medicine and then everything else is not wrong, just be aware it's not quite like that. All that Sonia is saying, these are schools that have, you know, they have their boards, they have uh, people that are credentialing them, they have boards. Uh, to uh, to to make sure that you uh, you have a standard of practice, as opposed to think that anything that you see in the newspapers, anything that you see uh, on uh, on WhatsApp, oh, that's great. Let me do that because yeah. there's a lot of charlatans out there. So just 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 like our dad, go through your reasoning. You know? uh, it's, it's very not, good point. Thank you, sister, for bringing this up. The towns. If you don't know much about it, it is uh, sometimes you kind of think that everything is included in empathetic medicine. It's like to see a sidekick, and yeah, that's criticism. Not quite. You're yeah, right. So, naturopathic medicine is also like that. Uh, nowadays, you see a lot of people who practice, for example, Chinese medicine, and they come from a school, sometimes in China or somewhere else. And they establish their practice. That's not the same as Chinese medicine taught in a naturopathic medical school. The naturopathic medical school, the you know, in the US we had four years, I think here you follow the same. Four years. So the naturopathic doctors have all the same four years of studying, like traditional medicine. The difference is, is the approach, is that they learn more about the natural medications. So they can prescribe um, allopathic medicine, but preferentially they use uh, herbal medicine or they use uh, uh, homeopathic medicine or they use other ways. And many times they can help the person to decrease the number of medications that they're taking just by changing their lifestyle, changing their nutrition and several other things. So it, it is uh, quite distinct and as Cicero pointed out, which is very important, they have a board, they have standards. So it's, it's a, an accredited school every year 
we have to go through the accreditation for every two years accreditation committee who looks at everything from curriculum to everything. So it's not something. Right. Did I answer your question? My question is um, about um, your initial notes about how some positions uh, have quite a resistance on talking about spirituality, right? And uh, and there's a lot of people who look at this as treacherous territory uh, because of things like Charlatan that you said, and it's not that easy to find very good papers and so on and so forth. But what about, um, say, a physician who doesn't know anything about that, but wants to just learn what would be the first step with them? What would you have them? Well, you, you can always approach a physician who, for example, doesn't know about spiritism and invite them to come to the spiritual center or to a study group. You know, you can always try that. Uh, sometimes they're very resistant. So it takes a lot of your um knowledge to kind of come to them and explain this is not like it, it, one of the things that we have experienced is that when you talk to for example american doctors about spiritism if you say spiritism they say oh, they link that with witchcraft with voodoo with a lot of other things, for example, there are practices from Cuba, from other places, that they they want to be more from. And that's the problem. So once we explain to them that we don't do anything that will cross into the medical practice, all we are doing is working with the spirit we are, the spirit uh, the part of the person, the patient. That's a different thing. So sometimes they might be able to. Was that your question? I just want to add just a little comment on naturopathy and sharing on and allopathic treatments. And, uh, and spiritism. So I think it's very clear, particularly for those who don't study spiritism, you have to understand that natural path medicine is not spiritism. It's very different. Um, it doesn't mean that we're connected in any way. Uh, and some people, you know, there are some some common ground, I would say, but there's no endorsement, right? So I think it's very important for us to separate things. So spiritism is something a lot more comprehensive than, than just a natural path of medicine, for example. Uh, another very important note is caution that most of the methods used by naturopathic treatments are not evidence-based treatments, right? So I mean, some of them are, some of them are not. I'm not for or against it. I'm just saying that you have to be very careful and you have to, you know, read well and understand well, you know, what is actually naturopathic, naturopathic treatment. And the last word of caution is uh, there is a stigma of looking at a medical doctor as someone who really doesn't care about spiritual patients. I mean, that's a problem because that does not include all of us. And, and I've been practicing for many years now, and, I, and I'll tell you that indeed I can see colleagues that uh, do see the disease process and they have to treat the disease. But the idea of treating a patient, not the disease, has been implemented in medical schools for now over 15 years. Um, and that's you know, a gigantic step in the curriculum uh, in most uh, North American institutions. Primarily here, for example, in the of Toronto, we have a very strong um, background in um, bringing students into the world of the patient. Right? And I think that's a lot of what we're just talking about. Um, and, and um, you know, obviously, I, I, there's a huge challenge, right, uh, connecting uh, spiritism and spirituality with uh, medical practice in general, particularly because in the science world, um, if you believe in anything religious, it's kind of you're all cast that there's this uh, uh, hundred year old or million year old uh, idea that you cannot mix them together. We've been trained to do that for over a thousand years, right? So breaking that very, very difficult. But I just saw a few notes of caution there, right? Because, you know, just make sure, understanding that 
what spirit is this, um, our mission, our goals, uh, the importance of connecting uh, medical, uh, you know, the medical world in general, or the health world, I would say, not actually the medical world, because dentists, pharmacists, physiologists, like anyone involved, uh, physiotherapists, they're all included, right, in this more incompetency understanding of what health is, right? And I think spiritism feels a very important aspect of it, because spiritism brings in the knowledge that we have from the spirit of who we are, right? For example, you get experience. We have a great one, Lazarus, in the Bible. Go read it. That's a, that was the very first probably near death experience recorded. So we can bring near death experiences here. We can actually have one right here, right now. Most people wouldn't believe on it. So you know, it's very important for us to understand that, right? In science, you know, we have people moving tables around for people to start understanding that the spirit was doing something, right? So what we have, we're seeing now, basically collected this paper, is that the same moving tables experiences, though in a different level. So things are happening around those. Some of us are picking it up, and you know we're kind of learning together. And spiritism is really bringing that back in and say, hey, wait a minute, just like they said, we know this, right? We have lots of data from this. We have our dad coming in and explaining all to us, and then about the Jalouis bringing like a whole new world of knowledge about this. And this is the importance that you know we're talking about here. And thank you guys for bringing that because this is really this is the core of what we're talking about, right? Thank you, and I thank you for for the comment. And I just want to remind again that first of all, we never said that spirit is linked to the medicine. I know it's just a warning for those who don't understand, right? Because it's important. Yeah, I just want to make sure that we never said that. The second is uh, the the board certified school, the, the, the schools that are, uh, for example, uh, in Portland, in Portland, they follow a, a evidence-based uh, practice. Uh, so that so that they have grants from NIH for their research. They have a huge grant now. So uh, we are very happy to who we are, and that's why we brought up, and Cicero was very good in bringing up that not everything, you know, not just because you said, I'm not a perfect doctor, you say, oh, that's safe to go, right? We need to know what you're doing. We need to know they are certified and all that. Um, the other thing that it was important that you brought up is that although our organization that are called Spiritist Medical Association because it was started by a group of physicians. We are open to every healthcare professional. Actually, we are open yeah, to course, everyone. I was teaching myself here you know, when I was saying physicians are like providers, providers. My wife is a nurse practitioner. There's physician assistants, there's, uh, there's much more than that. Right. Uh, Nutritionists. It's just, I guess it stems from, it started in Brazil, and Brazil, we don't have any of that. So no, it's not because of that, because it was started by physicians. physicians. Yes. So that's why it were a group of physicians that decided, let's work on this, let's do something. And they started like that. But it's actually open in Brazil everywhere. It's open to all healthcare professionals. In fact, in the US, our organization is open to everyone. We have uh, members who, are not in healthcare, and not associated with any healthcare practice, but they are supporting our cause. So they are members. We have students, we have people who are in, in, in the healthcare. Uh, one of the nurses are actually more active than physicians in bringing spirituality into the practice. Uh, in the U.S., one of the very important uh, nurses was Dr. Krieger. Dr. Krieger was a nurse who introduced the healing hands, like what we do passes. And she taught all the nurses about this. And there are um, uh, some hospitals where they have groups who do that for their patients. They just call different names. And we are the Spiritist Medical Association, now this, not the Spiritist Physician Association. Right. So we, we, we do have All medical practices. Yeah. All right. 
our time is over. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Once again, thank you very much. We will come back to another lecture later. So let's take a break now. We return. Our next lecture starts at 3 30. So please be back at least five minutes before, okay? Thank you, everyone. Thank you.